So hello my friends and welcome to another tutorial video on wildlife filmmaking. Um, if this is your first time visiting my channel, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is George, I'm a wildlife photographer, uh, cameraman, and that's pretty much what I do on this channel. I make videos all about photographing and filming wildlife out in the field, um, some DSLR camera trapping, uh, if that's of interest to you some tutorials like this one. So uh, hopefully you'll stick around, hopefully you'll find it interesting, and hopefully by the end I will have earned your subscription as well. So uh, yeah, today's uh, tutorial is about cinematic framing and composition for filming wildlife. So how do we frame a shot to make our story more interesting, more compelling? How do we uh, use compositional techniques to uh, draw and hold attention on our subjects. Um, there are various techniques we can use, compositional techniques, to, um, to achieve this, um, most of which are as true for uh, wildlife filming as they are for photography. So if you're coming from a photographic background, as I'm sure most of you are, um, that you've probably heard of a lot of these. Uh, the difference for wildlife filming uh, as opposed to photography is that you ha have to hold those rules, techniques, over a moving image as opposed to creating a still uh, employing those techniques. So the first compositional technique is one I'm sure most of you have already heard of, uh, especially coming from a photographic background and it's probably the one that people learn first of all uh, when uh, starting photography or filmmaking, and that is the rule of thirds, or law of thirds. Um, I should also say that even though it's called a rule or a law of thirds, uh, it's definitely not written in stone. You can break it, you can bend it uh, to suit your purposes, to better tell your story, to better bring focus to your subject, and especially if you're using other compositional techniques uh, as well, um, you can you don't have to adhere to rule of thirds. Uh, it's not set in stone. Um, having said all of that, uh, if you do, uh, it is a, it, it's the first rule for a reason, and that's because it's one of the most powerful rules to learn. Uh, and if you do place your subject on one of those horizontal or vertical thirds lines, or on the, any of the intersecting points, um, it does create a powerful, strong image. The difficulty for wildlife filmmaking is actually maintaining that position uh, whilst you are following your subject, or if you have set up a static shot that your subject is going to move through, uh, is actually creating the scene in the first place um, framing the scene, I should say, in the first place in such a way that it adheres to rule of thirds. And secondly, that the subject entering the frame uh, will move along one of those thirds lines or uh, stop on an intersecting point uh, or something like that. All of those things come together and create a, a, a strong image. So a useful tool uh, that is available to us um, as photographers and uh, filmmakers um, is uh, being able to see a grid on your viewfinder, which will help you maintain uh, your subject's position. Um, you can look up on your camera's menu on the, in the user manual or on the menu on the back of your cameras, and you can actually bring up a grid, um, a three by three grid, uh, so that you have that visual reference when you're actually making your composition. So as I mentioned before, um, it's a rule that's not set in stone and you can break it. Um, and it's good to know uh, certain ways that you might be able to break it and certain things that help you break it. So for example, one of the main things that will help you break the, the, the rule of thirds is having symmetry in your shot. Um, so one of the um, most intentional ways, if you like, of uh, breaking the rule um, for a subject uh, is by having it right smack bang in the middle of your shot. Uh, and again, it's sort of breaking it because it's in the middle and not 
on one of the first lines, but it isn't because in most likely the I line will be on the top thirds line or just above it. So you're sort of keeping to the rule, but also breaking it by having the subject right in the middle. So, um, so that's, that's a way of breaking the rule for uh, filming a subject. If you are filming a landscape, um, an intentional way of breaking the rule might be instead of setting your horizon to be on one of the thirds lines, which is uh, normal, um, you might want it cutting right across the middle of your frame. Um, again, this is usually regarded as a complete no-no, uh, splitting your frame in half, but in the instance where you have uh, symmetry in your shot created by something like reflections, um, it actually can be a really powerful um, uh, composition. Um, as I'll show you in just a second as well for one of the shots I did a few weeks ago uh, during my um, Pelicans workshops. So remembering for a second what I just said uh, uh, a moment ago about um, placing your subject in the middle, um, it's also, also useful in instances where you want to show uh, the strength of that animal, the uh, power, the authority, the status, any one of those feelings, by placing the subject in the middle with the eyes near either on the top thirds line or above it, um, just gives that impression of strength and power authority. Um, and it just adds to that feeling in the shot. So I have a few shots lined up here for you um, to show you. <clears throat> um, the first of which is of a griffin vulture that I placed right in the middle. You'll notice that the eyes are in the top box, uh, just above the top thirds line. And this goes to uh, its, its power, its status, uh, how pr prideful it looks. The following shot of the koipu, uh, it's not showing any of that. Um, the purpose of this shot was to show detail of the, the uh, orange teeth. Uh, its eyes, though, uh, are in the top box, just above the um, top thirds line. So it's also adhering, in a way, to the rule of thirds, but also breaking it by putting the subject right in the middle. The last shot of the pelican here, again, I want to show, wanted to show, when I was filming this, I wanted to show the power and the strength of the bird, its authority, because the story that I was filming at the time was about how uh, how the older pelicans intimidate the younger ones, uh, in, and um, uh, basically they get first dibs on, uh, on fish and what have you. Uh, so I wanted to uh, show how imposing um, uh, an adult pelican might be, and framing it in that way, right in the center, with the eyes looking right down the barrel of the lens at me, uh, it just gives that impression to the viewer. So the other instance I mentioned when you might break the rule of thirds uh, was with a static uh, shot. Um, the example I have for you is of the shot I took um, of the uh, pelicans during my workshop, whereby the conditions that morning were so calm and the lake was a perfect mirror of the sky and you could basically hardly tell where the lake ended and the sky began. Uh, and whereas the rule of thirds would say, don't put the horizon through the middle, here it really works well, especially with the birds flying into frame, um, some of which are on thirds lines, some of which are not. Uh, some, even when they fly in, they actually land on uh, intersecting points. Um, and it all adds to the strength of the image, in my opinion. So there are instances where you can get away with uh, breaking the rule. So compositional technique number two um, is again one um, that is commonly used uh, by landscape photographers actually, which is leading lines. Um, these can be any sort of natural lines that you find in the landscape, whether it's a stream running through your shot, 
um, whether it's a line of trees, a hedgerow, a wall, uh, anything like that that just creates a line through your shot um, is a leading line. And they create visual pathways which uh, both lead your viewer's eye into your uh, landscape and they can lead your viewer's eye to your subject or to where your subject might emerge from. So in the example I have lined up for you, um, the scene opens with two boulders which form an L and I've placed that L along the uh, left hand side and bottom thirds lines. Um, the corner of that L is on the intersection between those two lines. So your eye is just naturally drawn to that point, even though there's no subject in shot at the moment. Um, as soon as the Susalik, the ground squirrel, pops its head up, your eye is sort of is already there and expecting it. So it's a nice surprise. And the cuteness factor, of course, helps with him munching on a little bit of grass uh, and um, makes for a, for a great shot. Um, so leading lines, um, along with rule of thirds, has helped create a strong composition in this instance. OK, so the third technique I want to talk about is uh, basically uh, keeping balance in your frame. Um, what do I mean by that? So one of the one of the compositional techniques we use, for example, is the use of negative space, uh, which basically means having uh, empty space to to the side to either left or right of our subject, um, which is basically blank space, uh, uncluttered, um, without distraction. Um, that is a useful and it's a it's a it's a very pretty uh, compositional technique, um, but it can in some instances lead to a shot looking slightly lopsided, a bit heavy on the one side, imbalanced basically. And the way we overcome that is by trying to have as much weight on the one side of the frame as we do on the other, despite having negative space. Um, I should also mention at this point um, the concept of headroom, uh, which is having enough space, leaving enough space above your subject's head so that it doesn't look cramped in the shot. Uh, and for lack of a better expression, looking room, uh, which is basically leaving space to the side of your subject, where your subject is looking to, um, either from, for where it's looking or where it might move to. Um, even if it doesn't move in that direction, it's useful to have that space to the side of it. In the shot I have lined up for you to um, illustrate this, I'm using leading lines, rule of thirds, and balance uh, in the shot. So the branch forms a leading line to the third, top left third intersection. The balance to the shot, because at the moment uh, the shot is weighted to the left, is brought about by the fact that the bee eater flies in from the right. It lands on the branch and it is perfectly on the third, on the leftmost third line with its head at the intersection. And again, balance is created uh, because it flies off to the right out of frame. Uh, again, in that shot, I've made sure the bird has enough headroom um, so it doesn't look cramped in the shot, and also uh, I've left the space to the right of frame where the bird is looking to and where it has come from and is going to move to. So the fourth uh, compositional technique is one that I mentioned earlier uh, when breaking the rule of thirds, and that is symmetry. So symmetry utilizing symmetry in your shots uh, is a really impactful compositional technique when you can uh, find it and use it. Um, and especially when you use it in conjunction with other uh, techniques, rule of thirds, etc., it can be, uh, it can basically raise your composition, your frame to uh, uh, another level. So in the shot that I have lined up for you now, um, we have a pair of great crested grebes, which Whose, whose natural behavior is to basically mimic each other. 
um, they they um, mirror each other's uh, movements. Um, that's part of their courtship. So it makes for a perfect situation to use symmetry in the shot, and placing them in the middle in this way does just that. Um, their bodies, if you notice, are on the bottom thirds line, and their reflections um, actually uh, lead your eye into uh, into the to the space between them. Um, so we have leading lines, thirds, uh, and symmetry, uh, as well as negative space to the left and the right because it's a pretty empty shot. Um, so we're utilizing a lot of um, compositional techniques in one shot uh, to create a strong image. So the fifth um, compositional technique I want to talk about is uh, depth of field. In many instances, uh, and again, this is as true for filmmaking as it is in photography, uh, in many instances, you want to separate your subject from its background, which might be busy or distracting. So being able to choose a wide aperture uh, to throw the background out of focus uh, is a strong compositional technique. Equally, you might want to choose a small aperture because you might have multiple subjects at different points, at different depths within the scene, and you want them all sharp uh, because they're all, they all form part of the story. Um, have a look at the, the next few clips uh, and see uh, where I have chosen to have a wide aperture. Uh, to separate the subject from busy backgrounds. And in the last instance of the pelicans flying across the uh, sunrise, I have chosen a small aperture. Uh, it's a wider angle, which helps, obviously, um, and a small aperture so that when the birds fly in at different depths and they fly through the shot, um, they are all sharp front to back. So the last uh, compositional technique I want to talk about is utilizing frames within a frame. And this can be a tough one to achieve when filming wildlife because there are not too many naturally occurring frames within nature. Um, so what we're really talking about is uh, utilizing things like, for example, uh, photographing a bird through foliage, uh, framing it between the leaves, uh, framing a bird within its nest hole, um, framing an animal in its den hole um, and using those sorts of frames. Um, for urban wildlife, uh, it's somewhat easier to find those. So, for example, you, ha you can find um, an, an owl uh, perched on a, a barn window, um, on rocks, walls with gaps in them, etc., uh, fences, any sort of thing that an animal might peep through uh, could be used as a frame within a frame. So I've got a couple of clips lined up for you to illustrate uh, that. Um, and you will notice that uh, in a lot of them, it's not just using frame within a frame, but it's also using other techniques that we've talked about. So I'll talk you through them now. In the first shot, uh, we have this owl. Um, uh, looking through the foliage, followed by woodpecker feeding its chick. Again, the hole, um, as for the little dormouse, is placed on the uh, top left intersecting point, utilizing law of thirds. For the um, pendulum tit, we've got it, again, center frame. The little bitten is framed through the reeds. Uh, the little owl chick is framed within its burrow. Uh, and lastly, the uh, turtle is framed through the long grasses. So as you can see, utilizing frames, shapes uh, that you find in nature to frame your subject within those uh, can also be a really powerful compositional technique. Okay, so that uh, wraps up all the compositional techniques I wanted to discuss with you. Um, there are a few more, uh, such as using shapes that you might find within nature, uh, geometric and otherwise, and random, um, using uh, numbers, odd numbers particularly, uh, work well for a number of subjects that you might have in shot. 
Um, there's there's quite a few more, which I'm sure you'll enjoy discovering for yourselves along the way. The overall aim of using these compositional techniques uh, is to be able to emphasize your subject within the frame, to showcase their beauty uh, in, in the detail and in the whole and to illustrate their habits, their movements, their behaviors, and to tell their story in a way that is, uh, is beautiful and a joy to watch for the viewer. So um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope this has been of value to you. Um, I've written an article as well to accompany this video, which is on my blog page, which I will link to in the description below. Uh, please do drop me a comment, uh, a question if you have one. Uh, I always enjoy hearing from you. So thank you so much for watching and I shall see you all again soon. Bye for now.